This presentation shares the OER experience of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana. We'll be looking at the OER approach that we took in the university and then the processes we went through to develop our policies that govern our OER development and use in KNUSD. Look at some of the early efforts that um, we did in KNUSD and the impacts and benefits that we've experienced over the last couple of years that we've been involved in OER. OER activities began in the College of Health Sciences. So most of the focus up until now have been on health open educational resources. And it started with external collaborations with institutions like the University of Michigan, OER Africa, and other African institutions across the continent. It also facilitated some internal collaborations uh, within the university. For instance, even though it started in the College of Health Sciences, we collaborated with the Department for Communication Design in creating our OER materials um, across the university. We also took some initiatives to develop a policy to govern our OER work in the university. When it started in the College of Health Sciences, it, it started with voluntary participation by faculty. We had a few champions within the College of Health Sciences who picked up the interest of developing and using materials. And so it's not an obligation or requirement by all faculty to develop OER materials, but we have faculty volunteering to put their content into open educational resources and they are assisted and supported by media specialists who mainly come from the Department of Communication Design in designing the material and also support from our information technology directorate to put up out the material on, on the web. And then we also have um, clearing and review to make sure that the material that are being uh, developed have gone through the necessary um, quality assurance. And so we have media specialists who work on, on, on these materials to prove them and we, we, we term it describing before they are put out on the internet. And then we publish them on our university website. We have a university website, which you see on, on the um, next slides, where we put all our OER materials for access by students, faculty within the university, and also from all stakeholders from outside the university. And we make sure that the materials that we have on the internet uh, are accessible by all manner of persons around the world. In developing our policy, um, it was still spearheaded by the College of Health Sciences due to the fact that the OER project was hosted from the College of Health Sciences. The head of the college, who was the provost, appointed a, a committee to develop an OER policy that would not only cover OER development and use within the college, but across the university. And this process was actually quite useful in, in orienting other members of the university in this new initiative of, of open educational resources, in that when the proposal came from the college, it was forwarded to very different committees within the university to, to review and to approve. So we have our, we had our resources and planning committee of the university actually review that proposal. And then we had the final approval by our, the university's academic board in August of 2010. The process of taking it from the college governing body up onto the university governing bodies was also a process of educating the various leadership, um, leadership committees of the university on open educational resources. And so not only did we get our policy approved and um, ready for implementation across the university, it served as an um, educational orientation drive to bring the key stakeholders in universities on board. Currently, we have the policy in, in print. It's been published. It's also down, it can be downloaded on the university's website. And the 
leadership of the university have given all colleges the opportunity to develop their own strategies concerning how um, each college or department is going to use or in inculcate open educational resources in their teaching and learning. Um, this link down here shows where you can actually download the policy, the OER policy of KNUSD. So some of the early efforts um, of our faculty in open educational resources are showcased on this slide. Um, the link to the university's website um, is down here, but we have this. This is what we had as our initial homepage of our open educational resources web web page, and we had materials in in various formats. We had video productions and as you can see from here this was a video production of an examination of a pregnant patient and it was superimposed with a drawing to illustrate what the faculty member was was trying to put across to the students we also had um, other formats like in in graphs we also had other form formats like case studies as can shown on the screen right um this 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 was developed by um, the Department of, of Child Health. And then we also had um, illust illustrations and animations used to teach the students some of the complex processes um, that they, they have to learn. If, if this picture actually displays some of the challenges and one of the reasons why health we are actually came at the right time. We had large classes to deal with and uh, small spaces and small number of faculty members. And so the use of open educational resources um, was, was an innovative way of reaching the students with the materials that they needed at their own pace. The impact of OER on health education um, are varied and I say health education here because up until now open educational resource use in KNUS they have focused on health education within the College of Health Sciences and the university is in the process of of in increasing the use of OER in other colleges and in, in other disciplines but from the last couple of years and the experience of faculty using OERs in teaching and learning within the college, we see some of the benefits that that has brought to the college. We realize that it increases the learner-centeredness of teaching as compared to being teacher-centered. Students have access to materials long after the lecture they also have access to it even before the lecture, and therefore it, me it meets the needs of all types of learners, visual learners and those who learn by hearing better. And all the, learn the learners actually are able to absorb the materials at their own pace because they, they can access the materials on the internet, they can download them, and they can use it over and over again. It improves the teaching of complex processes as illustrated on the right, um, most of the health processes that are taught are within the body. They are complex biochemical or physiological processes, and therefore making use of some of these formats of, of teaching materials actually improves the teaching of such complex processes. And it also improves the clinical instruction um, of our medical students and other health um, trainees. If you look um, on this picture on the right, that is like a world round, a typical world round where you have residents, you have house officers, you have students, and the numbers are, are quite large. And therefore, it's difficult for all the students to see and observe all that the consultant or the faculty member is teaching during some of these world rounds. But we have, for instance, some of these rounds produced in video formats. We also have some surgical procedures produced in video formats. So the students have access to that before and after the actual class itself and the actual teaching session. And therefore, 
It improves the way they receive the material. It also improves the faculty student interaction because they are more familiar with the material and so they are able to interact better and ask questions and provide uh, provides, it also provides uh, resources beyond the current curriculum. Students are able to access other materials from other sources. And those are some of the benefits that open educational resources have actually given to health education um, in College of Health Sciences and KNUST. And so we see improved quality in education because of some of this innovative teaching and learning modes that we are using and also improve teacher learner interactions. And then we also see institutional ownership of this open educational resource initiative. It started as a project, externally funded project, but the process of developing a policy and showcasing what the pilot project has done has actually improved the institutional ownership of this initiative. And it goes to supplement the relative shortage of print resources that we have in, in the university for our students and it opens up a wide range of accessible materials to students to use and also to improve their their learning processes. We've also used this opportunity to, to do extensive networking and sharing of resources not only within the university or within Ghana where we share resources with other institutions like the University of Ghana but we also have networking across Africa and other parts of the world and we share our resources in um, forums like the African Health Education um, Health OER Network and KNEST has used this opportunity of developing original open educational resources to contribute to global to the global knowledge base and 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 so it, it it's actually an initiative that the university has embraced and is working towards improving, developing more materials, making use of other materials, sharing materials with other institutions, and, and generally improving the quality of the education that it gives to its trainees. Thank you very much. And um, um, these are some of our partners in the OER projects, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation who funded the pilot project, and um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as well, and we have partnered with the University of Michigan, OER Africa, and University of Ghana in the first two years of our pilot project. Thank you. <laughs>